Hey everybody, good morning and uh, welcome back. Uh, about here in Southwest Minnesota, we were in a little bit of a winter weather advisory, one could say, last night. Uh, it really wasn't that bad. We only had about 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. Probably got about four to six inches of snow. So I actually just got back in from, from throwing a bunch of powder. That's what I like to call snow blowing, throwing powder. It kind of sounds cool. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. But uh, high at 21 today, you know, snow on the ground, gonna be cloudy out. Uh, so I figured what a better day, or it, it, there can't really be a better day unless it's colder out uh, for a nice pot roast. Um, this piece of meat we're gonna use today is about a three pound arm roast. Um, I usually always use chuck roast and I've never not seen chuck roast uh, be at the store. But uh, to, uh, yesterday when I went and looked, they had no chuck roast. And I'm like, well, all right, I guess we're gonna try to arm roast. Uh, it's got some decent marbling in it. But uh, you see, we got some ingredients. The first part of this cook, um, we're just gonna, this is pretty much gonna be like a two part cook. The first part, we're just gonna smoke this. Uh, we got the Pits and Spits Maverick uh, 1250 fired up. Um, <laughs> I'll probably start doing a bunch of videos on that grill now. Got the insulated cover on. Uh, again, if you don't want the insulated cover and you live in cold climates, you don't need it. But I recommend it because it saves on pellets. But uh, we're gonna, you know, we got some red potatoes, some carrots, got some beef consomme. Uh, if you guys and girls have done pot roasts, the, even in the crock pot and you've used beef stock or if you used uh, beef broth, uh, give beef consomme a try. You know, usually when I wrap brisket, I'll wrap brisket with the consomme. And to me, it's just got a little bit more of a, one could say a savory flavor uh, than compared to the broth or the stock. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and inject this. The two kind of rubs we're gonna use is the Hardcore Carnivore Black, Hardcore Carnivore Red, kind of use a mixture of them. But uh, first thing we're gonna do is inject it. Uh, so I just have one can set aside for that. We're not gonna use the whole can obviously, but let's just go ahead and get a quick little injection going on this. It'll be good. Gonna go ahead and flip it. The other side. Jesus. We're gonna call that good. We'll just say one full two per side. Now we're gonna go on with the rub. I'm not gonna use a binder just because that uh, injection kind of got the outside nice and wet for us. We're gonna go on both coats, hardcore carnivore black first. And then we're going to use the Hardcore Carnivore Red. I might have said that wrong, but black first, red second, doesn't matter how you do it. And then come back with the red. In. And while we got it out, we're gonna get the sides too. And that is gonna be about good. So we're gonna go ahead and let this thing sit out while the pits and spits is coming up the temp. Uh, you can see I got those other ingredients out. Uh, I'll pick back up on those later, but for the first part of this cook, we're just gonna smoke this thing at 180, probably for about three and a half, four hours. So uh, I will pick back up and we're down at the pits and spits. Alrighty, we are outside uh, to a lovely snowy Southwest Minnesota. Uh, to me, if it's winter time, I love having snow on the ground. Uh, I was getting a little frustrated with it because, I mean, I'm not gonna complain because we were having 30 to 40 degree weather in the middle of December and into January and it was just like, holy crap. And then every time we got snow, it wasn't only snow, it was snow mixed with about 50 or 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, and that just makes throwing powder a little less enjoyable. But uh, last night, you know, we got throughout the day yesterday and overnight, we probably got four to six inches. Uh, not a lot of wind, just perfect weather out here. About 15 degrees right now. Pits and Spits is fired up to 180. Got that cold weather cover on there. Um, I see a lot of questions getting asked uh, about, you know, certain people's pits having longer heat up times or they don't heat up all the way. Um, you know, go on that Pits and Spits Facebook group, uh, or if you bought it from a dealer, ask the dealer, because there are settings in the controller you can change. Uh, I, for one, I have never had to change a single setting on that controller. Uh, it could have been that the dealer that I bought mine from uh, had them settings changed already, but I don't think he did, because I literally met him uh, at a loading dock, and we took the Pits and Spits right from his truck to my truck. 
uh, and it wasn't open. So maybe it came that way from Pits and Spits. I don't know. I've never had issues in the cold. I've cooked with this thing probably in 10, 15 below weather before. Uh, the only thing I'll do in that is uh, when it's that cold, I'll leave that lid open a little while longer and maybe wait till that thick smoke clears out and then I can really hear that flame kick in. Then I'll shut down the lid. Other than that, I just, you know, start this thing up normal. You know, lid open, wait till it starts smoking, close it down, and then in about 15, 20 minutes, she's where I want it. So right now we got it set at 180. Uh, truck roast is sitting right on top of the pellet hopper. Let's go ahead and throw it on. All right, first things first, I am monitoring the temp with my Thermalworks Smoke X4. Um, let's just go ahead and take a peek at that temp. That top temp is the temp of the grill, 179.8. I have it set at 180. That's one thing that this Pits and Spits does when it gets dialed in is it, uh, well, it, there's not much of a temp variance, but uh, let's go ahead and throw the arm roast on. So the plates are right there. I'm not going to do much with it. I'm not going to temp probe it because I know it's not going to be done in three or four hours at 180, but go ahead, close this thing down. And uh, this is at least going to go for three hours before I even do anything to it. Um, and I'm hoping I can do three and a half, four hours, and then I'll pull it off, throw it in the pan. And, uh, you know, when we throw it back in the pan, uh, I will pick back up and show you how we get all that going. So we'll see you in uh, three to four hours. All right, we are back, but I'm for about three and a half hours. Uh, give you a quick peek at the roast. Yeah, looking uh, pretty good. Uh, bark. Not really, but bark kind of sort of forming in there, so that'd be good enough. If anybody's curious of the internal temp at three and a half hours at 180, internal temp at about 122. So obviously, you know, this thing right here, uh, it's gonna be turned into pulled beef because it's gonna be like a pot roast. So, I mean, I need to take that up. Usually with chucks, it's gotta go to at least like 210 for it to pull nice and easy. But uh, I don't know, we'll just kind of have to play around with this arm roast or whatever it is and uh, see where it is. I'm assuming it's, you know, there's some pretty good marbling through it, so I'm assuming it'll be around 210. But the next step is gonna be, I'm gonna turn the pits and spits up to 275. I'm gonna bring that roast in the house and uh, I'll pick back up and I'll show you what we do with it. Got the roast in a disposable pan. I should have got one just maybe a little bigger, but uh, the next step we're gonna do is this would pretty much be how you would put a, uh, like a pot roast together in a crock pot if we do it right away. Um, I obviously <laughs> smoked this first for about three and a half hours. And now we're going to put it in this pan, uh, put some veggies in with it, and then put some beef consomme with it, and then cover it in foil and finish it up with the Rectex. So what I got here is about eight or nine uh, small to medium-sized red potatoes and about eight whole carrots all cut up. I put a little bit of the uh, vegetable oil on it, and then I dressed them up just with a little bit of the hardcore carnivore red and black. So let's just go ahead and put these in here over the roast. Once I got all the veggies put in there, I'm going to see if two cans of this beef consomme uh, will be enough. If not, I do have a third can, so let's just go ahead and pour it in. Just did a full three. Uh, that got this pan about all, well, it's about maybe a little less than halfway full. And then we're going to take some foil. back on the grill. I do got some hard-boiled eggs in there. Probably let this go for about 45 minutes at 275. But uh, put it back on the pits and spits. Pits and spits is set um, to 275. Uh, at this point, if you wanted to, you can finish it off in the oven, but I don't want to. I want to finish it off on the pits and spits. Um, I did have a full hopper of pellets at the beginning of this cook. Actually, maybe a little less than full. And you can see we're down to about two, two and a half inches. Uh, these are lumberjack 100% oak and then I mix them with 100% hickory uh, and just kind of put them all in there and just kind of all tossed and turned them but uh, yeah not much else to see here uh, until it's time to eat so uh, yeah hoping this thing will go probably for like another three hours three and a half hours and uh, will be time to eat so uh, we'll see you then we are back and it is time to eat real quick go over to cook times uh, pretty easy cook started this thing at 9 30 this morning it got done at 4 30 this afternoon uh, we did four hours at 180 and then we did another three hours at 275 with everything all wrapped up in the pan with the beef consomme and the veggies and the foil on top. I uh, brought this up to an internal, um, well I didn't I didn't probe it, but when I checked it after two hours it was at like 190 and when I checked it after three hours it was at like 211. Uh, this is the final product. Uh, we can see you got the roast sitting right there if you can see it. Um, it doesn't feel super probe tender, but we'll go ahead and tear into it and see what we got. 
Take a look at that roast. You got a nice looking smoke ring on there. Let's go ahead and give everything a try here. Okay, fork. I'd say fork tender. That's not quite as shreddable as like a chuck roast, but you know, that still shreds pretty good. Let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, well, I gotta say, injecting that roast with the beef consomme, that is over the top good. Um, and then using the beef consomme actually in the pan instead of beef broth or beef stock, really, really, really good. The, the flavor from that rub on there too, uh, just, you know, hardcore carnivore black, hardcore carnivore red, really good combination on there. And uh, yeah, you know, for this not being quite as tender as I was thinking it was gonna be, because it, it did, it didn't probe rough at 210, 211, but it probed not as like smooth as like a chuck roast would. I didn't think it would have that much flavor, but I am very pleased with it. So uh, now besides that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, you know, pull the, less, pull the rest of that stuff up, plate it all up, and we're gonna eat. So, uh, you know, give this uh, thing a try. You know, if you guys and girls like doing this in your crock pot, you know, you don't have to do it on the pellet grill, but you can do it on any kind of grill you want. But it just uh, gives it a little extra, you know, smoke flavor because there is a very faint taste of smoke in there as well. So now besides that, I'm going to sign off. You guys and girls have a good night and we will see you next time.